Well, good morning, guys. Welcome to Sunday Youth Bible Study. Good to be here again on another Sunday. I hope you guys are ready to study the Word of God. Hope you got a Bible, pencil, pen. Um, and every week I get an error that makes me think it's not recording, but I hope that it's okay. It says live. We're good, I think. So um, this week we're going to study about uh, Jesus teaching about prayer from the book of Luke. Um, it's going to be a good study. So uh, get ready. We're going to read through our verses, and then uh, you guys are going to read through it again as we go through our lesson together. So I'm going to start with Luke 11, 1 through 4, and then we're going to jump to uh, verses 9 through 13, and then we're going to jump up to chapter 18 and do verses 1 through 8. So we're going to be jumping around a little bit, so uh, be ready to come through the pages of your Bible. So Luke 11, 1 through 4, he was praying in a certain place. And when he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray. Just as John also taught his disciples. He said to them, whenever you pray, say, Father, your name honor, be honored as holy. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins. For we also forgive everyone in debt to us. Do not bring us into temptation. I'm going to jump ahead to verse 9 here. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds, and the one who knocks, the door will be opened. What father among you, if his son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead of a fish? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him. Now we're going to jump up to chapter 18. Now he told them a parable on the need for them to pray always and not give up. There was a judge in a certain town who didn't fear God or respect people, and a widow in that town kept coming to him saying, Give me justice against my adversary. For a while he was unwilling, but later he said to himself, even though I don't fear God or respect people, yet because this widow keeps pestering me, I will give her justice so that she doesn't wear me out by her persistent coming. Then the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. Will not God grant justice to his elect who cry out to him day and night? Will he delay helping them? I tell you that he will swiftly grant them justice. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? It's a pretty nifty set of verses we got there, guys. Um, remember to uh, pause me when you need to. If ever you need to look at something or uh, ask a question about something, um, and especially when we have you read through things i just remember that i forgot to remind you guys to pause things so um <clears throat> have you ever watched kids um grow up from like you know, being a baby to being a toddler to being a little bit older um it's amazing to watch how their speech gradually explodes as they grow up they go from aimless hazard babbling to a couple of words to full sentences and it seems like it's overnight almost it really does um and they say ball my ball to give me that ball now uh wordless crying to extremely articulate demands limited communication to holding entire conversations just like that they begin to take part in the day-to-day -day communication that we so often take for granted Prayer is like that. Um, we humans, we uh, start out with a very limited vocabulary when it comes to entering into conversation with God. We don't know much about God at first. 
But as we read his word and are indwelt by the power of the Holy Spirit, we start to understand more and more. And with that understanding comes better communication skills. And we show that skill through prayer. So, has your prayer deepened over the years? How has your prayer life deepened over the years? Two little questions. Has your prayer life deepened over the years, and how has it deepened over the years? And if not, does it, is that something that needs to change? But like children, we have to learn the purpose of getting better with communication. We have to trust the process and the hiccups along the way. But as we master the language, you know, talking prayer, talking to God, um, we go closer and closer to God. Um, you know, the one who's teaching us through the act of prayer. So, for our study, go ahead and read through Luke 11, 1 through 4 again. Chapter 11, verses 1 through 4. <clears throat> When Jesus taught his disciples how to pray, the first thing he told them to do is to recall God's glory. His kingdom and his will are foremost on Jesus' mind. And they should be foremost on all of ours. It's about God. Without a firm belief in the fact that God sustains everything, from the breath that you just now took, to whatever requests that you might have in mind, our prayers are of very little value. If you do not hold the fact that God sustains everything, your prayer is is just, it's, it's going to be weak and hindered. Um, the book of James um, says that uh, when you ask, ask without doubting, um, because the one who asks without doubting supposes he must not receive anything, or supposes that he will not receive anything. It's the same thing going on there. Jesus reminds us to acknowledge the glory of God, not because it's dependent upon our acknowledgement. God's glory is not dependent in any way on us or anything we do. God is glorious without us. <laughs> he is glorious. Um, but Jesus reminds us to acknowledge the glory of God <clears throat> because our prayers rely wholly upon his glory. Before we ask God a single thing, we need to be aware that he is already the giver of everything. His kingdom is coming and his purposes will be done. The purposes, the purposes of God's kingdom remain sure whether we pray for it or not. This prayer is more of a reminder for us. We pause to remember that God has a purpose for his creation and that we are a part of his master plan. We pause to remind ourselves to be submissive to whatever part he has given to us. We pause to remind ourselves that our God is in heaven and does whatever he pleases. We pause to orient ourselves around God and to remind ourselves that our prayers are an instrument in his hand for the glory of his kingdom. So real quick, and grab somebody to help you answer this if you need, how can you remind yourself of God's glory when you pray? How can you remind yourself of God's glory when you pray? So Jesus reminds us not only that um, our bodily needs are his concern, give us this day our daily bread, um, but also our spiritual needs. He reminds us to pray for our deepest need, the forgiveness of the sin that separates us from God. Then he reminds us to pray that we might grow more and more like our forgiving God as we forgive the sins of others who have sinned against us. In these two simple requests, bread and forgiveness, Jesus captures our physical and spiritual needs and reminds us to rely on the God who sustains us in both of them. You know, in that model prayer, we see um, like an outline of, of a healthy prayer life. You know, there's praise, you're praying for God's purposes, you're praying for God's provision, for God's pardon and for God's protection. And I should have said God's praise, obviously. 
Um, you know, it really is all about God and it's about submitting to him and uh, communicating with him. But that is just such a great outline that we have for him so that we have solid, good direction in prayer when we are talking to God. Go ahead and read through Luke 11, 9 through 13 for me. <clears throat> 11, 9 through 13. So in this passage, Jesus told his disciples that they should ask, seek, and knock. In other words, prayer is not passive, wishful thinking, but implies activity and initiative. Prayer then makes us active participants in the plan that God has for us, not just bystanders. Through prayer, we make our desires known, speaking up and asking in faith. There's this nasty fly that's all over me right now. I'm very sorry. It's distracting. <clears throat> Speaking up and asking in faith. Uh, when we shrink back from going before the throne in prayer, we were robbing ourselves of participating in God's glorious plan of providing for us. You know, prayer is a is it's a, a great opportunity to uh, you know practice obedience and to obey God in prayer because He commands us to pray. So, have you ever found yourself hesitant to ask God for something? That's a good question. When Jesus taught his disciples to pray. He taught them to address God as Father. The address is not an incidental afterthought, um, but an encouragement to see God as just that, Father and Sustainer. Jesus doesn't paint a picture here of a divine being who sits in heaven unwilling to hear the cries of our hearts. Instead, he shows us a loving Father who delights to give us good things. I mean, <clears throat> sadly, not all of us might have um, loving earthly fathers. Um, some of us can imagine a dad who would give a snake instead of a fish or a scorpion instead of an egg. Um, but even those who are far off from God can recognize that this type of man is the unfortunate exception. Even a man of the most questionable character is capable of showing love to his children. How much more so the God of the universe, our Father in heaven. He sent his only son to die on the cross for us and to spare us a deserved separation from him for all eternity. Oh, what can you think of? What are some additional reminders in scripture that teach us that God is good and cares for his people. And do a quick little search there. All right, I hope that was beneficial for you, if you did it. Read uh, Luke 18, 1 through 8 now. So this story is not just about the unprotected, and undervalued members of society. Uh, though it is one small aspect of the story Jesus told, it is instead about the fact that our persistence in going to God in prayer has the ability to teach us something about the God that we serve. In Jesus' tale, the judge is an unrighteous man who does not naturally care for the widow who should be under his care. It's her persistence that sways him to do the right thing. Jesus compared this unrighteous judge to his father in heaven, the ultimately righteous judge. And the contrast is very sharp. God is not waiting to be convinced to help us. He stands ready and willing to help us. Our persistence then is not something that controls the outcome. <laughs> God is already willing to help his children. Rather, our persistence continually puts our hearts in a posture of prayerfully waiting. It's just part of being submissive 
to God, of being submitted to him and depending on him. So how would you assess the persistence of your own prayer life? It's a tough one because I think most of us lack a really serious persistence. And that's something that we should always be growing in is persistence in prayer, growing in that um, desperately honest communication with God where we're just crying out to him. You know, most of the time I would like to believe that I'm really, really crying out. But I think that um, there could be more persistence there. Maybe you can identify with that. So Jesus' um, model of prayer, it emphasizes simplicity in approaching God as our loving and providing Father. And don't you don't you love simplicity? I love simplicity. It's a lot easier to get a hold of things that are put more simple for me. Um, you know, and this is supported by a series of encouraging images of God's heart towards us. <clears throat> We ask and seek and knock, we will receive gifts from our Father based not on the our goodness or efforts, but on his nature as a loving Father. This revelation of who God is for us in Christ is a warm invitation to cast our cares on him, seeking him with confidence, not fear. The God-honoring response to this is worship and rejoicing in his gift. And, you know, as we grow um, in maturity in our um, spiritual walk with Christ, you know, our character has grown to be more and more like God's character. So the more we're praying, we're praying in line with God's character. And that's just a very, very important thing to know, to recognize as you grow. So just a couple of uh, just a couple of final things here. Just a couple of questions. Um, you know, we're talking about we're talking about prayer and casting our cares and asking and seeking and knocking and finding and all of that stuff. Um, you know, one thing that's really really important to know and to remember is that the answers to our prayers are in the Word of God. Okay, the answers to your prayers are in the word of God. So <clears throat> knowing that, knowing that when you pray, are you prepared for God's answer? Have you been in the word? Is it stored up in your heart? God is going to answer you with his word. Okay, he's going to answer you with the Bible. So are you prepared for the answer? an important thing if we're um if we're if we're praying and praying and crying out to god and crying out to god and we're never in his word we're never growing in knowledge of our savior of our god knowing him knowing his character and knowing what his word says yet we're praying constantly that what what value is it you don't know the character to pray in line with you don't you don't know the character of god How? We got we to gotta have the word if we're going to be praying and expecting God to answer us, right? Um, there's just a quick question for you. What are some important things that should be on your prayer list each day? Things that you should pray about every day. What do you think you can do this week to have a more disciplined prayer life? All right, guys. That is it for our study today. I hope it was edifying to you. I hope that you're encouraged by it. And I hope that the word sticks in our hearts and helps us to grow up and to trust God and to depend on him more. Um, I will catch you guys next Sunday. Maybe I'll catch some of you here in a little bit, even though you're probably watching this after Sunday. Yeah. See you guys. <laughs>